Hello again, and welcome to the Master's Voice. I'm Celestial, and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers, you are very welcome. If you are a new subscriber, please be sure to check out the playlists. I recommend that you start with the Russia and China playlist because that was the first group of prophecies that the Lord instructed me to start making into video. They're not the first group of prophecies that I ever received, but they are the first ones that God said to make into video. And the reason for that is because God says it is critical that America should understand that when he moves against her for judgment, he is not going to do it out of nowhere. He is going to use the nations of Russia and China to come to this country at an undisclosed time in the future and attack suddenly from the outside. Not only that, if you watch the, the Russia and China playlist, you will find out that God has revealed already that there is a heavy Russian presence in the United States already. God says that the Russians have been here for decades upon decades that they have seamlessly blended with the population, that if you were trying to find a hidden Russian by thinking that perhaps his accent or his um, cultural background would give him away, God says that these people have been living here for decades, that they have blended seamlessly with the population. So that means they have intermarried sometimes with Americans, sometimes Russian with Russian. They have given birth to American citizen children, they are citizens themselves. And in fact, God says that you will find Russians in the most unlikely places, in the highest offices of politics, among the entertainers, among the stars, and also right down to the rudimentary basics of the nation, meaning your average neighbor next door could be one of these people. In fact, his exact phrase that I rendered in one of the prophecies from very long ago was, the Russians are more American than Americans themselves. So if you are new, the very first place to start would be the Russia and China playlist. It is very important. There is also the Sin, the Sin series. Everything on this channel has been done in series. It is only in, I think, the last two to three months, I would say hmm, July, August, and now September, that God is putting things in any order that he wishes. So I'm simply making the videos according to whichever one he will give. And sometimes he gives two of a series. So I'm following that series. And then he says, today you make this one. So it is only afterward that I will put those ones um, into, into order. This evening, today is Sunday, September 18. It's about 1 a.m. in the morning, almost here in New York City. I'm going to release a portion of the prayer call from September 15th. So I've already released a portion of the prayer call from September 14. I'm just writing things down here to keep them straight. I released a portion of the prayer call from September 14th, 2022. And I've shared that recently the Lord has been coming right into the prayer call with live prophecy. So I'll be praying with my intercessor. We pray every day and, um, prophecy will just break out. So when prophecy breaks out, um, normally I will just allow the Lord to speak whatever he is speaking. And afterwards I bring that prophecy to the blog, but now it has not been five or eight minutes of prophecy. It has been a straight hour of just speaking forth, speaking forth, speaking forth things about my life, her life, other people's lives, which obviously can't be brought here, but then a lot about the United States. And so today I think there is almost 20 minutes of prophecy that I can bring here to the master's voice. But before I do so, this will be a prelude as to what you are going to hear. You're going to hear about the judgment of New York City in this prophecy. God has brought many hard words for this city that I live in. God has brought many final words for New York City. And in the prophecy, you're going to hear some of those words. You're going to hear about why New York will be judged. You're going to hear about what form that judgment will take. You're going to hear about what God has to say about the so-called good people of New York. So even those that God would say, okay, these people are not exactly guilty of gross sin, but here is their sin nonetheless. So you're going to hear what's going to happen to that. You're going to hear what God says about America, the fact that America does not adopt a watchman's stance. So in other words, America is not watching and praying for the coming of the Lord. In fact, America is getting deeper and deeper into the kind of sin 
that would cause a person's heart to go into palpitations when they hear it. And the reason I know that that is so is because when people come to the master's voice and they begin to go through the video, especially the videos of the last three months, and they begin to hear about sex houses where little children are being sodomized by grown men, where people are being chained to walls and being forced to perform sex acts. And as long as the person who is paying to chain you to that wall has paid for two hours, that person has the right to sodomize you or do whatever they want to you, sometimes even bringing in animals to use on you for the two hours that they have paid for. And so when people come to this channel and they hear the things that God is revealing, they're taken aback because there's this general idea that this is a nation of Christians, which is by now, if you've come this far with the master's voice, it's fallacy. So God says this nation is not even remotely poised to expect him. And this means that includes all the Christians who are falsely laboring under the belief that they are not going to be tried, tested. They think that when prophet Daniel said that many will be purified and made white, he meant that they, they, would, they would get to put their robes through the wash and then go to heaven without being tested. God is going to try the hearts of men. He is going to insert a blade into the guts of every single person. And he alone will determine who is fit for rest in his kingdom. There's going to be a very high death toll here, and I'm not going to give that number. All I will say is that God gave me this number in May, and it shocked me. It took my breath away. It was in the middle of the night, 2 or 3 a.m. I woke up, and the Lord started speaking to me, and he was telling me how high the death toll in the United States is going to be. And the number he gave me, I never would have brought it out in public, but I spoke that number out. The number came out of my mouth. As I prophesied under the spirit of the Lord, and he told me to not edit it out, but to leave it there. God says that he will not show mercy in this country for the things that this country is guilty of. You will hear in the call that there will be a civil war in America and that people will flee this country such as has never been seen before. So, uh, CNN has been with me my whole life, my whole life. There has been a CNN talking and giving the news. There has been a BBC talking and giving the news. But um, this exodus out of America is going to be covered in a way that has never been covered before. And so I'm going to go right back to the beginning. This brief prelude is going to contain many different experiences and dreams and revelations. So let's start from the beginning. God says that New York City will be judged. And her judgment will be that she will be drowned under the water in the latter days. So I've shared these prophecies um, already before. I think one of them is called New York will go underwater. And the other one is called um, the water will rise like a pencil. And what God basically has revealed to me is that a super unbelievable, shocking, more than 100 foot water, uncountable feet of water will come to New York City and will basically devastate and destroy the entire East Coast, obliterating New York City. There's going to be nothing left of this place. In fact, the phrase that he used in the prophecy, the water will rise like a pencil, is that something called megaton force. Megaton force is what God said is going to hit the proud skyline of New York. And he said to me, Celestial, the buildings are going to snap in half. And so when I made that build, that video, I actually made this motion because it's the motion of having a pencil and you break it in half and the top half just basically falls to the ground and you see the bottom of the pencil sticking up like a jagged stump. And that's what I saw in the vision that the buildings were snapped in half because the water that came from the sea was so massive that when it hit the buildings, those buildings, whether they have steel in them, whether they have girders, no matter what they have, they broke off like pencils and the bases of them were sticking up like jagged tooth stumps out of the ground. And the whole thing was covered. New York fell down and the sea rose up and the sea took everything and there was nothing there. And God says that America, um, New York's sins, our homosexuality, 
This is same-sex attraction. So please listen, if you're 15 years old and you're involved in homosexuality, this does not necessarily make you a sodomite. Sodomy is what homosexuals practice. It is the act of men having sex in the backside. So if you're a 15 year old and you only like boys so far, you, you have committed the sin of homosexuality, but not yet the sin of sodomy. When you become sexually active in that lifestyle, man to man or woman to woman, then you are with the, um, then you are doing sodomy. And with the women, what God has showed me is that the women put something on to give them the ability like a male, and then they will either do it to a female or they can do it to a male. New York's sin is the sin of abortion. The Lord has said in other prophecies that New York is a very deceptive state. That this is a state that manipulates the federal government so that it gets more than its fair share. Say it's, it's a place of trickery and deception. It is a city of cruelty, but the Lord mentioned one new sin for New York that I had never heard today, and that sin is the sin of tolerance. And he was rebuking Christians in New York City and saying that your problem is your tolerance. You want to be the friend of the sinner more than you want to save the sinner from sin. And therefore, the good people of New York City will not be allowed to escape because they are complacent, weak and they are dim candles who do nothing to preach the true gospel of the living God. And so God says that armies will occupy New York City. And I've spoken of the occupying armies that will come to America. They are the forces of Russia, Ukraine, China, Taiwan. And then as time progressed, because this prophetic gift with me is literally growing in front of me, I'm watching it expand itself and begin to stretch and cover so much territory every day. After about a year or two had passed of prophesying the same countries, God gave me new countries. And those new countries included Japan that will also come here and have um, soldiers here. And God revealed that North Korea and South Korea will become one country. So those two countries, after about 70 or more years of disunification, of being at war with each other, fighting and in great separation, they're going to become one Korea again, and they're going to come. And along with China, North Korea, South Korea, and Japan, that fulfills the prophecy called the Kings of the East, when the Euphrates River will dry up and people will march from Asia here to the United States. And so um, another punishment that will come upon New York is that God says that New Yorkers will go hungry. This is not in the prayer call, but God has said to me very often that the sin of America is that she has a brazen forehead, meaning she is extremely hard up here and she will not listen, but also that she has a rude and impudent tongue. So that means when the Lord is bringing forth his prophetic words, people will say, it's a lie, you are a liar, your father, Satan, is the one who is telling you these things. But God has said many times, Celestial, bear these things not in your heart. For when men go silent because of the hunger that will hold them, they will not be able to speak. And it will be you who comes back to me to beg and plead for them. So um, one of the punishments that I've seen here is that there was no, there's no food in the country, that this country would go not just to starvation. This country is going to have almost the idea identical punishments, anything that you see happening to ancient Israel in the Bible, I have prophesied it against America. It has just come one after another. And one of their punishments was that they did not only go into starvation and famine, they went into cannibalism. God prophesied to them that he would so brutalize them because of their sin, their impudence, their rudeness, that they would eventually end up eating one another. And so God says that New Yorkers will go hungry. And he said that New York will have gulags. A gulag is, I guess you might say, it is a communist word or a socialist word for a work camp. But this is not just any work camp. The work camps that I have seen that the Russians will run, um, especially since they are masters in it, I think the word gulag belongs to them. It's a work camp where you will work until you die. So you will do backbreaking work. People in the camps will do backbreaking work. Like, I don't know, they will, they will break rocks. They will work with limestone. They will do any kind of work. Um, 
that you can think of until it begins to have a bone jarring effect. This is when they force you to break rocks and you don't have the special equipment that does this thing. You're literally going to be breaking those rocks with, I don't know, a hammer, a chisel, something. And what that does, it has terrible effects on the hands, the feet. It's exhausting work, not enough food, not enough rest. And in those work camps, you can't run away. And I also saw that you can't commit suicide because the Russians are going to be standing there all the time. And their policy is because I said that God will put such vengeance in the hearts of these people. When these people come here, this thing called homosexuality in America, if you have heard these words and you do not want to repent of this sin, of being a woman who lays with women, of being a man who lays with men, then all I can say is if you have already made your choice and hardened your heart against the word of the Lord, or you think that I'm just coming here and giving my personal preference, then all I can say is you should enjoy it. Because when Russia and China come here, they will obliterate trans sexual sexuality. They will obliterate homosexuality. Those people will have such an indignance. They will be like bulls snorting anger through the nose at the idea that men want to lay with other men. And I have shared in the old prophecies that they will treat people poorly according to the vengeance God puts in their hearts, but the way that gays and transsexual men especially will suffer. You will wish that you had never tried this thing. You will wish with your soul of souls that you had listened when the Lord was speaking to you and drawing you back to repent and to let go of the desire in you that makes you think that what you feel, what you want to do is higher than the work and the word of God. And so in these gulags, people will just work and they will be maltreated because of a feeling, a specific type of heart that God will put in these people that will not show mercy unless you are God's child, in which case they will behave completely difficult, different towards you. And of course, New York's final punishment, as I said, that Lady Liberty herself will lie at the bottom of the harbor, that this city will drown. The second thing God said is that this nation is not focused on him at all. The nation is not watching for him. It is an entertainment focused nation. And therefore there's going to be sudden death here, no mercy and a very high death toll. The third thing that basically is the most important, I would say, all of it is important, but is that there's a brutal civil war coming for America, how this shocked me when it came out of my mouth. Though I have prophesied it before and it is in writing, I saw that people were running away willy-nilly. And here I will just share briefly that um, when the Lord first revealed these things to me, he showed me how it would go down. I saw Russian soldiers... Um, no, this is later, but basically he showed me that America would go into a brutal civil war, brother against brother, and the country is going to experience some, um, almost, it's going to be almost like the lockdown. The country will be locked down. And what I saw was foreigners fleeing. As far back as 2015, I wrote a very detailed email and the Lord told me to share this. I wrote a very detailed email and I sent it to about 50 people and about 40 of the people on that email were my family. So you might think, oh, I'm just sitting here and I dropped out of the sky. I have family. I'm connected to people. I speak to them. So I know what it is when your family listens to you and I know what it is when your family does not listen. The majority of my family absolutely did not even respond to that email. It was like I had never sent an email at all. And yet the civil war is coming. People fleeing to South America, people fleeing to Africa, people going as far afield as Asia. I saw people racing into South America who are not even South American. And um, here with one of my dearest sister's permission, I will share, um, two dreams that she had. This was many years ago, I think in 2014, I was sharing with her, this woman has been in my life forever. And I was sharing with her about the things that the Lord was starting to show me them very concerning things. And I was trying to lead her to understand how important these things were. Now understand 2014 was a very long time away because this is 2022. But for me, the urgency was the same then as it is now. And I was trying to get her to understand and she wasn't understanding because she was saying, well, how can God do these things to America? And I finally had to say to her, people who want truth don't ask questions. People who want truth ask God, go to the Father and ask him to reveal these things that I'm saying to you. 
And she went away, and within the period of three days, she had two dreams, and she came back to me with those dreams, and I will share those dreams now. Her first dream was that she dreamt there was no food in America. She said that it was the most devastating thing that she had ever seen. She said that um, she saw that McDonald's was costing over $100. And she said, this is an impossibility because I know the cost of a happy meal. But she said, a burger, a simple burger without the Coke and everything else was above $100. And she said, very few people could afford that food that is so common right now. And she said another thing that she saw is that people gathered around the trash in the McDonald's. And when a person who could afford the food was finished and would throw things away, people would then begin to fight over those scraps that are left on the tray or that are thrown into the trash. They would try to grab before the person put the leftovers in the trash. The second thing that she saw was that she said she saw Americans by night at the borders. And I've spoken of this before. She said she saw Americans at the borders and they were struggling with all their might to climb those impossibly high border walls. And I've prophesied to America and I've said, America, God said to tell you that the walls you have built will be your prison. As you built those walls to keep others out, you shall be held back by those walls and perish within them. She said that she saw a father struggling with all his might and he had managed to help the mother get over, and they had gotten the more agile children over, but now they were in, they were stuck because they did not know how to get the smallest child who obviously has to be helped the whole way over that wall. And she said to me, it was by night, and I could not believe that this was America. And I've spoken in the prophecy saying that Americans who can make it will flee into South America. And I saw them sitting in the houses of Mexican people, crying, bawling, screaming to the point that their children who had never seen such emotion out of their parents were paralyzed. And I said that the older Mexicans really didn't have time for that because they're very practical people. So the older Mexicans were trying to find clothing for the children and trying to figure out in their small houses who's going to sleep where. It was the younger Mex Mexicans who were better with English, who were taking time to try and comfort Americans who were crying. And I saw that Americans were heartbroken. They could not believe what had happened to their homeland. And they knew that they were in exile forever. They were never going home. And you will hear on the prayer call that God says, I will leave no remnant here. I will scatter them into the nations. And what God is saying there is this is the punishment for the slavery that America has done, scattering God's people into the nations. And so God says that he will scatter Americans into the nations and the remnant, meaning the ones who survive, that he holds, that he has mercy on. He said that the punishment for the living will be forever being asked to tell your story. So people will keep asking, what did you people do to anger the Lord of hosts in this way? How did you come to this point where you so enraged God? And God says, that people will be forced to tell their story again and again and again of how America was destroyed. God spoke to immigrants and he said, you thought you came here to retire. You thought that you came here to stay here forever. You thought that you would um, put down roots and this would be home. I will scatter you back to where you came from because I'm a merciful God. You will not stay here. You are not going to pay for America's sins with her. I will drive you out. And if I don't drive you out, I will allow the circumstances of life to squeeze you until you finally can't hold any on anymore and you leave yourself. I saw that the French and the British were extremely angry. You will hear it in the prayer call. The French were so indignant against you, America. They were enraged. And I've spoken about this in old prophecies, how I always see the French and they are so disdainful that a first world country, a world leader would allow itself to fall to civil war in this modern time. They were so angry because they were losing investments, they were losing money, they were losing assets. Another thing in this prayer call is that there is a huge financial crash coming and God says that people are spending money on foolishness as if money doesn't matter. He even spoke to me today, something that is not in the prayer call. And he said, imagine my child, that women of today are taking thousands of dollars and putting it in their mouths, their breasts, and their backsides. This is where they think to put 
finances, not into saving, not into bettering themselves, but in extending their hips, their thighs, their waists, and their backside. And he says this gives a new meaning to the phrase sitting on your cash, because we know people that put money into tin cans and bury it in the yard. We know people that keep their money in um, the floorboards, and we know people that keep the money in the mattress and then sleep on it. But the Lord said, imagine taking finances and investing it in your flesh. And he says, won't such people wail in the day that the economy crashes? Because every second, ladies, that you take your clothes off, you'll basically be looking at where you decided to do your banking. This is the height of foolery. The Lord called it vanity. Also things like, um, going gambling, constantly going on vacation, just, you can just for the Instagram pictures, um, extra cars, expensive shoe collections, spending thousands of dollars on a pair of sneakers. Um, he mentioned, I thought it was game boy. That's what kept coming to my mind. What is a game boy? But it was actually the PlayStation people wasting their money in this way. And he says that in a day, in one day, in a single hour, America will become a different landscape and everything will be destroyed. Um, and the last thing in the prayer call, the Lord said that every country that copies America will be punished and that punishment will be his spiritual response as judgment. The spiritual response to sin is judgment. So people who are out there because you see people on American TV doing certain things, you started adopting those habits in your country, especially transsexuality, homosexuality, Freemasonry, that kind of thing, blood oaths, blood covenants. You started to do those things because that's what goes on here in this society. God says that when Mystery Babylon is getting her punishment, taking her licks, spiritually, you will get the same. You will get the same. Any country that copies America, you will also be punished like she will. And so this is just um, the prelude. Prophecy is a witness to itself. And so there, there are countless prophecies for um, occupation of America. That's why I mentioned the Russia and China playlist. There are two prophecies you may want to check out concerning the financial crash. I think one came in June and it's called the Iron Gods. And the other one, probably July. And it's called underwater where I saw the country was like a bathroom that was sinking underwater. It's about to get completely flooded. And so this call is from, I think it is September 15. It's September 15, because there's still one more to be released. I I'm still working on that from September 7th. And so this is celestial with the master's voice. Mm. One of the things that God has said to me many times is, um, concerning New York city is when I would walk in the city, you know, sometimes you look at the buildings, they're so tall and soaring. You look at the various neighborhoods. They're so well put together. You go to times square and it's larger than life. And the Lord will always say to me, my daughter, do not be dazzled by their pomp and show. Do not be dazzled by their finery. For I say to you that this entire city will be trampled underfoot by wild animals. So one of the prophecies about, um, the destruction of a rebellious city, I'm not sure if it's Babylon in the Bible or not, is that it says that it will become a haunt for the unclean bird, for the unclean animals, for desert ghouls and nightshades to play there, and that the ostrich will live in the pleasant palaces. And basically, this is God saying that when every single person is taken out of the city and the city is desolate, None other than these animals that live in the outskirts are going to move, whether it's zoo animals like you've seen in some of these really weird dystopian movies, whether it's zoo animals that are going to be walking in the streets or something like that, this prophecy will be fulfilled upon this city, that animals will take over, that animals will be sleeping in these expensive houses on Park Avenue and Fifth and all that. And then after that, in the final days, many parts of America will be underwater. And so, as I have said, I am working to finish these prophecies. It will take some time, but I am on my way to getting them all done. I'm on my way to writing them all. I'm on my way to making all the videos. And at the time that I have made enough, I will be able to do something else. This is Celestial with the master's voice. And until I see you again, thank you to all who support me. May the Lord bless you and keep your household. Goodbye.